talk today about using Slack for student communication. And I'm going to start with a little bit of context because I think that the way that I use it, it is in one of my classes, but it's not a typical type of class. So it's um, used in my research lab in psychology is where I have the most experience with it. So um, we do studies with human subjects, mostly preschool aged kids. So um, we have families that come into the lab and participate in studies. And so I have to manage a lot of undergraduates who help me make that lab work. So the undergrad research assistants that I'll just refer to as my RAs enroll for credit. So it is a class that they're taking, but there's not um, the kind of structure on it that you would expect in a normal class. Uh, recently, I've had between eight and 12 RAs working each semester. They enroll for two or three credits each. And because the lab doesn't work like a normal class, all of the hours associated with that credit are spent in the lab. So rather than having the one hour lecture and the three hours outside of lecture, for each credit they're enrolled, they work three hours in the lab. So that means um, we have six or nine hours a week per student that they're in the lab. And one of the things that we found really challenging is that our projects span more than a single semester, but our students don't always. And so we have at least partial turnover every single semester, where some students leave, some students stay, and some new students come. And so this is trying to find a longer form of communication that can work both in real time in the lab as we're getting things done, and then also give us some continuity across semesters. And I also have, uh, right now I have four graduate students who help supervise those RAs, so they're a little bit of a go-between, in between me and the RAs, um, but they don't know as much as I do, so they don't necessarily have all the answers, so I still have to be pretty closely involved. So what I was looking for was, um, a way that I can communicate with all of these students effectively without totally driving myself crazy. The main thing I wanted was to have less email. So I, like many academics, am overwhelmed with email and I was finding that it was just more than could reasonably be productive. Um, but in addition to wanting to not have as much email, I wanted to actually have more communication with my students. Um, and especially this near real time. I can't always communicate with them in real time, but I need to be able to answer questions quickly, ask questions when I have them, and email was just too slow for that. And really what I wanted it to do for me was help me manage what was going on. So um, one of the challenges I have is that my lab space is split across campus, so half my students work in the Brogdon Psychology Building, which is right here on main campus, and half my students work out at the Wasteman Center. And so, obviously, I can't be both of those places at once, and so a lot of times I wasn't even in one of those places. Um, so having a way to manage things from afar was really critical. And then dealing with that turnover, that projects are going to involve different students at different times, and so it's hard for the RAs to keep track of who the relevant people are to share information with. So these were some of the challenges we were having. So what I had tried, and for a little more context, previously we had relied mostly on email. So we would email an RA before they were supposed to come into work or during their shift if we had something that just came up that they needed to do. And then we would ask at the end of their shift that they email us back and tell us what they worked on, any problems that we, they had. Um, they were also supposed to let us know if they ran into problems when they happened, but that didn't happen very much. We ended up doing lots of forwarding of emails to other people because the students couldn't remember who the right person was to tell about something, or they failed to reply all when you CC'd somebody on an email. Um, and what we really learned from this is basically that RAs, undergrads, don't really read email. They don't use email for many things. And so it was an extra step that they had to take that was specific to the lab. So we would email someone during their shift, and they would say, oh, I didn't see this because they don't check my email. So they would check their email only for the purpose of the lab. It was not terribly effective. Um, and so I heard from other colleagues at other universities that they had used Slack to manage communication within their lab, and that's what led me to try it. So we adopted it uh, just at the beginning of this calendar year. So we started in January 2016. And it's a type of instant messaging system, and what you can do is have different channels that are dedicated to different types of information. And so I'll, I'll actually show some of mine here. So we've got stuff to do. So that was where we would tell people what they were supposed to do that day, end of shift. So at the end of their shift, that's where they give an update. And then we have different channels that correspond to all the different projects we have going on. So you'll see 
the insanity here when I show you. So every one of these that starts with study is a different kind of study that we have going on. And so when they have information that's related to one of those studies, sometimes it's only relevant to that one, and so they can put that information there. Um, but you can see I've got a lot. And so um, we have these different channels that are dedicated to different kinds of information. And this really allowed our RAs to ask um, and us to answer questions throughout the shift. So for the student experience, it's much more like texting. And they're much more likely to do it than send an email. So we found that when we started using this, the number of questions we got from students really increased, but in a good way, because they were questions that they should have been asking us. And so we were able to find out things that were confusing to them much earlier on than in our old email. And I also said previously, we used to have weekly lab meetings where we would go over, okay, here's all the things you need to remember for next week. I did learn, don't have those on Fridays because nothing will last in an undergrad's <laughs> mind from Friday afternoon to the next week. Um, and so we had a real challenge with the information in lab meeting as well, that we would tell them all this stuff, we would send an email with a summary of what the meeting was about, but then it's pretty clear that no one was actually using that information. And so by having information in Slack, it's divided up according to the topics that it's relevant for. <coughs> so for all those different studies I was showing, no one student works on all of those projects, and so then they can look only at the studies that are relevant for them. So what happened is that overall, I totally love Slack. I was so incredibly happy when we started using it. It was a much better solution than what we had before. Um, so there are a lot of things that I love about it. Uh, I like knowing what was going on all the time. It gave me a sense of how productive we were being, when problems were coming up. Uh, I could answer questions, and I could also get answers to my questions. So when students would post something that was completely vague and hard to understand, previously when they did that in email, I would email them back, and then they might not respond, or they might respond three days later. And when I ask questions in Slack, I get answers much more quickly. It helped us identify, prevent, and fix problems very quickly. So we've had much better solutions to our problems. Um, those channels keep a history, so when a new member joins the lab, they can look back, if you're starting on a new project, you can say, look back through this channel and see what's happened when we've been doing this. Or if you have three different students who need to do the same task, you can put it in there once and tell them where to find it. And I love that it compartmentalized all of my lab-related activity away from everything else I get in my email. It actually made me better about answering other emails because I wasn't dealing with all the email from my lab. I also feel like it's made uh, my RAs more accountable because it's really clear who is doing what, when, and who's asking the question, and who's answering, and when something's done incorrectly, you can find it really quickly. And it reduced the number of meetings I had to have in which I felt like I was basically talking about to myself. And so I don't know, you've probably seen this before, the, the ribbon you get for surviving a meeting that should have been a email, but I think I'd replace that with should have been a Slack channel because many of the meetings that we used to have have now been entirely replaced by putting information in the Slack channel. So as much as I've loved it, I will admit it is definitely not perfect. So there are a number of things that I don't love about it. None of them are deal breakers for me because it's better enough than what we were doing before. One thing that's really hard that I'm not sure we've really solved is the balance in the number of channels you have. So the more channels you have, the more specific each of them is, the more constrained the information is that goes in there, but then the more you have to understand what all of them correspond to and keep track of where you need to put information. Um, related to that, every semester we have to train RAs on how to use it, how to use it the way that we want them to use it, so they don't always understand the distinctions between the channels that we understand because we're the ones who created them. I've had a few students who never really seem to get it. So working in the lab for two semesters and they still don't seem to understand where they're supposed to put different kinds of information. Um, and actually I would say I have one grad student who it hasn't really caught on for him either. He, I think because he, he's older than most of my other graduate students. I don't know, I mean he's actually like my age and I really like it, so I'm not sure it's totally generational. But that's the number one thing is that, you know, he also grew up at a time when we didn't have text messaging and email and even those things when we were in college. And so, I don't know, he's not quite into the communication. He much prefers communicating in person. Um, which is fine for him and his RAs, but then it's really hard for me to know what conversations have happened between them. Um, so you have to, or at least I've had to, basically just 
tell people that they have to use it the way that I want them to use it, whether that's what they want or not. And related to that, it is harder to use with bigger gaps in time. So if it's going to, if you know you're going to be away from it for six hours and not be able to check in at all, then it is hard to come back and catch up on everything you missed, and maybe some of the questions got answered already, but you don't realize it. Um, and actually related to this, this might have changed recently, but there's no easy way to, um, or at least I haven't found an easy way to flag one particular message as needing a response. So we have things like students would say, oh, I'm going to be out of town next Friday. Is that okay? Can someone cover for me? And that's very easy to get lost in the history. And instead of keeping up and knowing that you can go back and do just the things that you need to respond to. <clears throat> and the last thing that has actually changed even in the time that we've used it is like many of these kinds of productivity tools, there are various levels. There's the free version, and then there are the various paid versions that do all sorts of cooler things. So there are limitations to the free account. So you don't have um, an unlimited archive with the free account. So once you pass 10,000 messages, which we actually did in the spring semester, then anything older than that doesn't, isn't viewable. But you can download and archive your own channels. I haven't used that. Um, but then if you want to use a paid account, for the most part, it's paid per user in your team. And so then when you're getting to, I mean, I have a lab that's a lot smaller than most classes are. So thinking about using this in a classroom setting, it would be prohibitive to use. It's a per user per month fee that you usually have to pay. <clears throat> so, what I do next time, we actually, um, we're continuing to use this in the lab. We took a break this summer and tried a different tool that's somewhat similar. Um, it's called Zapti. They all have the weirdest names, I swear, these productivity tools. Um, so Zapti was supposed to be kind of like Slack, but integrate some other features. And we found that we really didn't like it and couldn't quite put our finger on it, but it didn't even do the things we liked that Slack did. So, after a little hiatus this summer, we're back to using it in the lab. We've written up clear guidelines on how to use it. And we, um, actually this is my third point, we give lots of feedback early on. So when students are new to the lab, every time they post something, we say, well, you could have posted this here, or you should have said this differently. And so hoping to train them very quickly. And then we're also, this semester, trying integration with Trello for project management. So things where we need a workflow. Um, Trello is an easy way to keep track of that. And Slack has tons of integrations with other apps. And this is one that we're trying out right now. And then the last thing I add is that um, now that I've used it in my research lab, I'm thinking about what are ways that I could use it in some of the classes that I teach. And I think it would be useful. Um, I have a 100 student lecture that I've taught a couple times that I'm going to be turning into an online class in the future. And I think having an online class, it would be nice to be able to use Slack for a synchronous discussion in an online class. Because then you could have different channels that are corresponding to different kinds of content. Um, and you can kind of drop in and see what's going on in all of them without necessarily being part of them. This could be a place that students could post questions they have about lectures and readings, because when you're doing an online class, they don't have that opportunity in class or right after class. And as near as I can tell, I'm actually using Canvas this semester in my seminar class, only 23 students there. But I think that Slack would be kind of a in between the way discussion boards and chat function in Canvas. Because you can have it on different topics like you can on discussion boards, but it's more like a real time conversation, um, more like chat is. But as near as I can tell in Canvas, chat doesn't seem to have <laughs> topics or yeah, channels that you could 